Oh my gosh, it's so cold in this house. Ah. Welcome weirdos to another video. Today I have decided to do the Hasty Reddit tag. This tag is all over booktube and I want just want to thank Steve Donahue personally for deciding to respond to all of these videos because it is an awesome way as a fellow booktuber for me to find new awesome creators. This book tag was created by Mayberry Book Club. It's just a really fun tag and it's really creating a sense of community here on booktube and I love it and it's really fun. So the challenge is, is to find books that Steve hasn't read. I don't know what the person who scored the highest yet. I think the highest was like four out of ten books or something, but I don't know. Please, anyone who knows, please correct me in the comments and I will pin your comments. So, how many books do I have here? I have eight books. Actually, nine books. I personally think I could stump Steve with just anthropology books alone, but in the interest of fairness, I have limited to one of those books, and uh, it's a fairly popular book, at least in anthropology circles. Also in the interest of fairness, I decided to not include any of my Spanish works. So like things like this one, nope. Works have to kind of be in English, and that's the only ways I've really limited myself. So let's just get straight to it. Disclaimer, I'm probably going to be mispronouncing things because that is such a theme. I'm sorry, I cannot help it. It's just a uh, part of life on this booktube channel. Okay, so the first book is the anthropology book and that is The Raw and the Cooked by Claude Levi Strauss. I've talked about this book I think before on this channel but this is a very popular anthropology book. It's a book that almost all anthropologists have in their bookshelves. It is pretty amazing because it talks about religion. Religion and mythology and the ways that mythology can be interpreted and Claude Levi Strauss quintessential book on how he interprets religion which is the more of like duology um, yeah, which is really, really interesting. So, Steve, have you read this? The next book that I think that Steve hasn't read is Chinese Culture and Society by Yao Baorong and Wei Zhu. It is all about Chinese culture and society, as you can probably guess by the title. And I'm really excited. It, this is updated. This is was made in 2008? 2007. And it goes through things like higher education, martial arts in China, and also the government in China, and a little bit brief history about China, which is really cool. It's kind of a, a good book for like foreigners to read before they go to China. I'm going to reread this before I go to China. Steve, have you read this? The next book is Good Morning, Good Night, Little Pet Talks for Me and You by Limamal Miranda and illustrated by Johnny Sun. This is essentially a collection of Limamal Miranda's tweets that he sent out um, every morning and every night. So it's not really a poetry collection, but it's not really like like a short story thing. It's literally just a series of tweets. It's kind of like poetry. You could maybe call it that, but I really like it. It's really quick. Steve, you can read it so fast. Steve, have you read this? The next book is Pen Pals, A Friendship in English and F Spanish. Catherine Burnzone and Laura Morton, and the Spanish is by Rosa Martin. And it's illustrated by Jane Hughes, and this is really cool because it's just a series of letters that these two um, kids send back and forth. There's English and Spanish translation, so when it is the the Spanish speaker, he like writes his things in Spanish, and then the English translation is on the side, and with the English speaker, they write their things in English, and then the Spanish translation is on the side. So this is really fun. It's really cute. So Steve, have you read this one? Next book is Lincoln and Medicine by Glenna R. Schrodinger Lynn and this, as you can imagine, talks about Lincoln and um, the possible conditions he might have had that people have speculated that he had and it also looks at the medical history and the medical health of his wife and his kids. But also, as you can imagine, takes a look at medicine of the time and the medicine that was involved in, you know, at Lincoln's deathbed and the things that they tried to do to save him and ultimately failed, sadly. It's a very short book. How many pages is this again? I don't remember. This is less than 100 pages, so Steve, this should take you under an hour to read. So Steve, have you read this? The next book I pulled off my shelves is the Doctor Who, the Shakespeare Notebooks, and this is really cool because it takes Shakespeare's plays and it inserts the doctor into them. So it's just, it's real fun. P plays that are featured in this are like Hamlet and The Tempest and stuff like that. So I believe like at some point like they play, they have to play the ghosts and it's all just really cool because it's like the doctor and his companions help 
move the plot along in the Shakespeare plays. So that's really cool. I, and I really liked it. So Steve, have you read this? The next book I have is a graphic novel and I've actually lost the dust jacket. So I'm going to have to read from the spine here. And it is The Thrilling Adventures of Lovelace and Babbage by Sydney Padua. And this is really fun because it's kind of nonfiction, but also kind of not because of the way the author like reimagined things. So this is essentially a biography of Anna Lovelace, but it also talks a lot about Charles Babbage, who she worked real closely with, and then it also explores other great thinkers and scientists of the time, and it's just a really, really fun romp. And the notes, oh my god. So here's like a little bit of the art. The notes that she does like for each little section, the amount of research she put in, and this is the the woman who wrote it. She's just a cartoonist. She did, um, she, but she was just fascinated by Ada Lovelace's story and created this really amazing book, um, and I really love it, and it's really fun. Have you read The Thrilling Adventures of Lovelace and Babbage? This is another book that has lost its dust jacket. Uh, when I bought it, it did not have a dust jacket, okay? This is about the Indians of South America by Paul Radden, and this is essentially like an ethnography of all of these different cultures in Native America, and it was written in the 50s, so it's a little bit outdated, and in the preface it's like, yeah, there isn't a lot of research on Native Americans in the Southern Hemisphere, there's a whole lot on North American, um, which I think is a shame, and there's lots of really, really fascinating, interesting cultures there, and yeah, so Steve. Have you read Indians of South America by Paul Rudd? <laughs> Good luck finding a copy. I think this is even out of print. Nice, beautiful map inside of the continent of South America. Now, the last book that I have to see if you've read, Steve, is Beyond the River, the untold story of the heroes of the Underground Railroad by Anne Hagerdorn. And this tells the story of the Rankins that lived in... Well, not the Rankins. Oh my god, I always mix up their names because it's the Rankin house. The Ripleys, who lived in the Rankin house, and their whole leg of the Underground Railroad, and how they helped get people to safety, or get slaves to freedom. Lots of really good research, and the author is local to Cincinnati, I believe. Steve, have you read Beyond the River? That is it for my books and my guesses, so Steve, let me know how I did. Yeah, I'm excited to figure that out. Thank you guys! everyone else for watching this video. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all of those important things. Well, I am going to answer this phone call that my mom is uh, calling me from. All right, bye. Ooh, is this bye? Oh my god. Ah, that's not what I wanted. Ooh.